right, I'm standing here with Miss Nikki and her pony boy, Blaze. And can you tell me a little bit about um, your relationship and what you like about him being a pony and, and how it works? Um, well, I've been into the lifestyle since the early 80s, and when I first saw pony play, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous because I train horses for a living. And a few years after that, I actually got to see some pony boys and said, I can do that. Uh, it's amazing. It's fun. I treat them just like I treat my bio horses at home, and I have draft horses, which is nice because I like the size difference. And so I actually train Blaze to be the same type of draft horse as I have with my Percherons back home. And for people who don't know what a draft horse is, what is that? They're the big, rugged, log-pulling, cart-pulling horses. They pull for distance with heavy weights behind them. Okay. And you actually have a cart, and we'll see the, the cart later, but you have a cart that he pulls for you. I do. I have a cart that he pulls. I have a parachute that he pulls. I've got about 12 other pony boys and girls, and they're each different. Some do dressage, some do uh, barrel racing and gymkhana. I've got, I own Buck, who's one of the most famous saddle ponies in the world. Um, and I've got Blaze, who's probably one of the biggest ponies. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, six seven. He was telling me, and and you're five you're one. five one. You're shorter than me, even. <laughs> so, um, but the dichotomy is wonderful. Um, and what about the relationship that you have with him? Is it just as a pony, or is it also a romantic relationship? No, I'm married. I've got two children. Um, my husband doesn't do a whole lot of pony play. He'll do a little, but um, Blaze and I just do our pony play. And he comes to my barn, and I will hook him up, and I will groom him, and I will treat him just like any of the other horses. I'll turn him out in the paddock with my horses, and I'll take him for a ride in the cart or make him pull logs. Yeah. And so when you're, when you're working with him and you're communicating with him, um, as a pony, of course, he can't speak, but he can, he can communicate back with you in other ways, correct? It's all body language. It's a lot of trust. It's learning his characteristics. If he's uncomfortable, I'll see him walk a little different, stand a little different. He may twist. He may chew on his bit. He may paw the ground just like a normal horse. Like he was doing a minute he's, ago? Yeah, he's getting a little anxious. Um, and you really have to be aware that they can't, they, they can't talk. They can't communicate. And a lot of times they are in such deep headspace that they wouldn't be able to communicate even without the bit in their mouth. So it, it's... It's a labor of love. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of training. It's a lot of trust. It has nothing to do with bestiality, which really upsets me when people think that. It has nothing to do yeah. with and I didn't sex. Even, I, I didn't even think of that. Some people do. Yeah. And the and the beauty of it is that you're you're connecting on a on a different plane, on a different level, on a different intimacy. Absolutely. And it's not, you know, you mentioned it's not the sexual piece because you have your husband and, and your relationship with him for that. This is more of a of another connection, another spiritual connection, another way of, of just being you. It is. It's a very it's almost a psychic connection, just like you would have with a horse. Um, as soon as I put his tack on and start grooming him, I see a horse. I see a pony. That's how I treat him. Okay. I treat my ponies with amazing respect and love because at 2,000 pounds, he could outmuscle me, outpull me. He could outmuscle me, outpull me. So they do what they do out of respect and love, not out of fear. Okay. And I guess, do you have anything to say? <laughs> Here I'm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing.